I said, this can't be happening right now. Oh. Oh. Whew. All right, check this out. Has something ever happened that made you never want to throw another party again? Well, this is what happened to me. Now, some people are party goers. Some people are party throwers. I realized that I am a party goer. I'm not a party thrower. The chaos is not worth it. The stress is not worth it. And you never actually get to have fun when you're the one throwing the party. So this happened back in 2014. What a time. Bobby Shmurda and Chris Brown's Loyal are blasting through everybody's speakers. Everyone's still wearing bucket hats and I'm still in high school. Now, if you're from Toronto, you know about the mansion party that happened this year because everybody went 1500 people to be exact. So now my friend group on the whole other side of the city decides to throw a party because our house was kind of like the party house, basically because my aunt and uncle are super cool. I don't know why, considering they're black and considering they're African. And if I had kids, ain't no way I'm letting them throw this much parties. But doesn't matter. They let us throw the party. We didn't even know the mansion party was this same day. We planned this like two weeks ago. We started telling all the people. We just wanted to make sure like the guy to gal ratio was good. You know, two to one, three to one. So we were telling everybody that we knew. So the party day arrives. I'm starting to get ready. I put on my best 2014 fit. A bucket hat probably. Some cargo shorts. Maybe a graphic crew neck like the Migos did and a snapback and probably some Jordans too. So now people are starting to arrive and it's a good number, you know, the vibes are good, the settings is good. I'm thinking it's gonna be a good night. And it was for about an hour. Remember this mansion party that I was telling you about? Well, this party was so promoted, so talked about, and everyone was going to the point that the police got there early and set up shop like a food truck at the end of a club night. That party did not last long. Windows are broken, stairs are broken, the terrain outside is mash up, people are getting beat up, thrown out windows. It was like the Hunger Games over there. And I wanted no parts of that. Cause I'm not a fan of the pack like sardines vibe at a party. You can't even do nothing, you can't talk to nobody. So apparently the guy told his mom that he was just gonna have a few friends over and basically like put a billboard on the highway. Like that's how much people came. This was like Toronto's version of Project X literally like no exaggeration and when that party got locked off somebody i have no idea who someone leaked our address and everyone started to make their way over to our house and we're at the house unknown like we're chilling having fun we don't know that this is all about to happen meanwhile there's a stampede coming across the city so probably around 11 11 30 i went upstairs to try and <laughs> haul that little shouty i was trying to talk to and by the time i came back downstairs our good, good, nice, clean house looked like live on Sundays. This is an average sized house, you know, but the basement is packed. The main floor is packed. The backyard is packed. The front lawn is packed and there's people in every room upstairs. And if you looked outside, the street was full of cars. It looked like you were trying to cross the border or something. Whole street, both sides, cars going all the way down. So at this point, I'm in panic mode. All chances of me having fun are out the window. I'm just trying to make sure the house is still intact by the time that my family comes home. So I turn into a garbage man. I'm picking up bottles, backwoods, miscellaneous items, cups, and everyone didn't really have the same urgency that I did. Our older cousin was there too. He was probably the one who was doing the most besides me trying to maintain the sanity of the house. But looking back on it, I wish I kind of just enjoyed myself because me stressing and doing all that cleaning and stuff didn't really make that much of a difference. And to this day, everyone else still says that was one of the litest parties they went to, but I wouldn't know. My older cousin was dating a girl at this time who thought she was helping, but she really wasn't. She was of the Caucasian persuasion let's say. I don't know how many black parties she's been to, but she obviously doesn't know the do's and don'ts of these parties. For example, do invite your baddie friends that want to turn up. Don't yell at the street dudes that you don't know. That's literally rule number one of survival. I don't want there to be yellow tape around the house. So I go downstairs. I see her in his face screaming, get out the house. He stands up. He's like, yo, who do you think you're talking to? I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm about to witness a homicide, a double homicide. 
I kind of knew him, so I just went to go reason with him. And she just didn't know that you can't really go to a hood man guns blazing or they might have their guns blazing. You gotta be calm and reason with them. Meanwhile, a couple of our friends on the football team said they would do security. That didn't really happen. One was passed out drunk near the front door. The second was actually trying to help. He was doing a little bit of something, accompanied by this very small woman who was charging people to get into the party. And to this day, I have still not seen a dollar of this money. Also, another person who took a knife from our kitchen and said he was protecting the house. This is our security detail. So I get past all this mess and I go out and stand on the front lawn and it looks like Astro World. Bottles everywhere, trash everywhere, it's pandemonium. And just as I thought it couldn't get any more hot on the block, this car pulls up, backs onto the lawn, the trunk of the car opens, speakers fly up out the back like Coachella and start blasting Dominican music like we were in Washington Heights or something. I said, this can't be happening right now. Then to make matters worse, an undercover police car comes by, shines that big bright white light in my face and he starts yelling at me. I can't hear what he said, so I just took off. So I ran back inside and all I hear is beep, 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 beep. The garage door opening. I said, oh my goodness, we are finished. My auntie and uncle are back home. I literally just go outside and sit in front of the garage and just shake my head because I'm thinking this is the last that anybody is going to hear from us. But to my surprise, they weren't even upset. You know how when parents come home, parties kind of naturally just disperse on their own. And then the next day, they didn't mention a thing. So I'm, I'm confusion. I don't know. So now the party's over and I find out that one of our friends is the one who called the cops. He said, I didn't know what to do, bro. The party was getting out of hand and we obviously couldn't contain it. The next day, it looked like a trailer park around the whole area. Bottles for blocks and miles as far as the eyes can see. I'm pretty sure that's the day when the neighbors started hating us because they definitely hate us now. I'm gonna still say it's because we're black but it's probably because of the parties. From that day, I learned to stay in my lane. I will not throw, I will only attend. The only things we throw are very controlled and precisely handpicked people for games nights and barbecues. I'm completely fine with that all summer because honestly, as a grown person, those types of parties are not even fun. Why do I wanna be shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of people I don't know? That's not lit. So if you throw parties, good luck because I retire. So that's it for this video. Comment down below if you've ever had a crazy party. Like tell me the story and tell me what happened because I hope that I'm not the only one that's gotten through this. Catch y'all in the next video. Stay safe, stay faithful, I'm out.